Hey everyone, welcome back to another Godzilla Battleline video, and today we have a very special tier list for you. This is not my tier list. My tier list usually is at the end of the seasons and will be a live stream, so you want my tier list, you come back to this channel in a few weeks and it'll be up, right? Okay. This tier list is a special tier list because it is an amalgamation of many tier lists, many, many tier lists, right? Over the weekend, this last weekend, a lot of the whales and a lot of the top, like top, top players of the game got together and decided what if we made our own tier list based on the highest level of play possible in battle line and then averaged out where all the characters placed on our tier list and made one big tier list based off of those results. And that would be maybe the truest form of a tier list. So it's yes, influenced by like biases and stuff like that, but it's not like me saying like, oh, Ultima is the best because I like Ultima or something like that, right? Not that I would do that to you guys, but Ultima is the best. So be like, okay, everyone thinks Ultima is good. Where would Ultima fall if we average it out, right? So you can see pretty high up in the A tier. The only little notes that I have for how everyone is placed is for S tier, they are going from like least to greatest. So Batra has like the lowest percentage of all of those characters for like that spot in the S tier, if I'm reading this correctly. So like Batra had like a two point something percent S tier, like uh, Mothra Leo had like a four percent something S tier. So these are the like the top four in S tier are by like for sure the top four characters that the top player, top, top, top echelon of players are using. I just don't really remember the order in which they put them in, but I know Ultraman is, is being the most used and Batra being the least used at the top, top, top levels of play. Okay, so let's just take a look at the tiers and kind of break it down uh, on what exactly is going on, right? So Batra being the least used out of these four at the top levels of play stems from a very simple, uh, very simple thing. And that is that when you are operating with level 30s or even like level 20s or higher, the boosts, while they are good, the the stats on these characters are already going to be really solid. So if you can, like, brute force your way through something, Batra isn't really needed to boost. However, everyone is in, you know, in line saying that Batra is amazing. He's not needed in high-level play the same way he's pretty much needed in low-level play because you can brute force your way through. But everyone is saying Batra has really great stats, the buff is great. I mean, the buff is still very viable in high rank. You just don't need to rely on it as much because of your other character stats. Batra's stats are great. Batra's boost is great. Batra's speed is great and can really elevate a push. Even at the highest levels of play, you can take, you know, maybe a, a tiny push that's, you know, some, nothing to something with Batra's boost. And if this is a super powerful push anyway, Batra is just going to take it up over the top. So general consensus is Batra pretty fire right leo now i didn't personally put leo in my tier list in the s tier last season but after speaking with a lot of these guys i'm strongly considering it for this season as well as my general use of mothra leo this season the consensus for mothra leo being in s tier is that you know mothra leo stats are pretty decent surprisingly beefy for a five cost flyer not many things are gonna 1v1 uh leo in regular ranked unless or like for the same cost ish you have to usually spend more than five energy to take a leo down unless you know it's another leo when they collide with their rushes leo being an s tier is because not only did the boost to the stats make it really solid but it makes that rush really solid and with the rise of five cost flyers being dominant Leo is a really, really good counter. I mean, look at the four S tier units. Batra, Leo, Firedan, Ultraman. All three of them. Leo is a kind of a hard counter. If Leo's rush is going to hit any of them, I mean, Leo's rush will practically kill an Ultraman, right? That is huge. That is huge, huge, huge. Now, Leo is probably the easiest, uh, easy, most easily counterable of any of these S tier units on this tier list, right? Because you could throw Kamakras, you could throw uh, Larva, you could throw Dimension Tide down and kind of throw uh, throw Leo off course. But if that Leo makes contact with any substantial character on your opponent's side of the field, that is a lot of damage, especially the higher level the Leo, the higher the damage is going to be. So Leo is an S tier. It seems almost solely because he's just an incredible counter to everything that's in the meta right now, right? He might, he is meta because he is counter meta, is 
what I'm gathering from everyone's opinions on him. Leah has also really great stats to back him up as well. Firodan, this is a no-brainer, man. Firodan's heal is phenomenal, has always been fantastic, and now with the on-death evolution, really great. The pre-evolution is also just good as like a meat shield, good for body blocking, you know, that's something that we love to see. But uh, Firodan can really take a push and like glue it all together, you send it up, could be huge. You could send Firodan up with slower monsters like Naranga, Burning Godzilla, Biollante, and Gearus GD9, and it really can become a dangerous push. I don't really, need to, I don't think I need to explain Firodan to you guys, but pretty solid unit. And at high levels of play, I is seems like it's seeing more play than Leo. Maybe I'm guessing just because the healing is so good, right? And then finally, Ultraman. I mean, what doesn't Ultraman do? Right? Ultraman has stun resistance. Ultraman can fly. Ultraman is on the ground sometimes. Has range that is comparable to Manila. Has piercing. Ultraman is just, like, in a league of his own. He is doing so much work for your team that it, it, it is... It is he's, he's busted. Ultraman is so good. So, so, so good. Definitely, I mean, according to this, the best unit in the game. Right? And I personally believe he is one of the best as well. So... Ultraman is a phenomenal unit if you don't have him, get on that, and then uh, actually the day after this video goes live is Ultraman's All-Star Battle, so maybe we'll be able to get pieces for him, so that'll be fun. But those S-tier units, you know, we've seen these guys in the S-tier and the A-tier for months and months and months and months and months, so what about this A-tier status here, right? I'm not going to go too much into the B-tier, the C-tier, the D-tier, but the A-tier definitely is uh, looking a little bit more compact than maybe like my own tier list, so... Biolante is on here. Biolante still is amazing DPS, even you know when they're not in the water. Seeing a lot less play because of the flyers. However, Biolante's energy cost to versus what she can do in the field is phenomenal, right? So at the high levels of play, Biolante seeing is seeing play as well. Burning Godzilla. Now a few people had Burning Godzilla in their top five, right? So the S tier is four, and then the next like A. The next like few in A tier are pretty much what people's fifth places were. Up until I think Ultima or maybe Dimension Tide, these were all fifth place picks, right? Burning Godzilla. Slow, yes, builds the charge. You can put him in a nasty push with Fire Rodan. You could put him in a nasty push with Gigan or G or Girth and Zeton. Really solid with them. And the explosion is phenomenal now that they increased the range. And they didn't increase the damage, they just increased the range, but being able to get more enemies in that explosion, phenomenal. Gigan 4 at the top of A tier. This is something that, you know, regular players, like I've been telling you guys, is going to happen. At the top levels of play, it's already happening. The stun, the range stun on him is phenomenal, and the DPS that he can put out is really good. He just got a damage buff as well. So phenomenal unit, you know, right? He is like a uh, 1.4 second attack speed so he's really laying hits in like crazy really really solid unit psychic chorus psychic chorus is no brainer it's the best it's the best effect piece in this game the healing is incredible the longer your characters are alive the more damage you can output it's incredibly simple in games like this it makes sense right longer your characters are alive the more damage you could output the more damage you do to your enemies the more you have a chance of winning psychic chorus no brainer right but dimension tide not too far behind as you can see Godzilla 1954 can evolve into Kiryu, Burning, Terrestrial Slash Ultima, and GD9. All are phenomenal units, right? And then for all for two costs less is also really good. But G54 himself has really good stats. Him and Ultima have very similar stats, and both of them are surprisingly tanky. I think maybe G54 is more tanky than Ultima. Ultima's just got, I mean, obviously incredible range, but G54 seeing a lot of play because at this high level of play, the odds are that you have his pieces that he can transform into at high levels is is high, right? For lack of a better word. If I'm playing, if I'm using like all level 30s, if I'm at like the highest echelon of play, like whale play, all my other characters he could evolve are probably in the 20s or higher, right? So having them all for two less cost is phenomenal. So, so 54 is seeing a lot of play and a lot of people are agreeing that once other players, you know, maybe next year or something have some of his characters build up even further, he'll be seeing a lot more play. And already in lower ranks, he's seeing play. I'm using him on my free to play account. I'm having a lot of fun with him because I can just summon like my level three Kiryu out of nowhere for four uh, energies. Phenomenal. And then finally on Ultima, range is the best stat in the game. 
Ultima's got it, and especially with the downfall of Super X after, you know, the implementation of Ultraman, basically hard countering Super X left and right, Ultima is second best range in the game after Super X, and Ultraman's not going to kill him in one or two hits, right? Ultima is beefy. Ultima is surprisingly beefy, and he's super, super strong as well. So having an Ultima on the field, third party of push is a ridiculous, ridiculous thing to see, especially at the high levels of play. I just got my Ultima leveled up today again to 18, finally after like three months of not playing any terrestrial pieces. So I'm even thinking about putting Ultima back in my deck and, and going back to those glory days, you know, but that's like the top, right? Like this is the top echelon of, of play. I can post this somewhere in my Discord uh, if you guys want, but I'm not going to go through this whole tier list. We literally would be here for like an hour, right? So basically at the end of the day, the top four agreed upon best characters in the game are Batra, Leo, Fire Dan, Ultraman. Not in that order. And then as good other slots into your deck, we have all these ATU Biolante, Burning Godzilla, Gigano 4, Super, or, I'm sorry, Psychic Chorus, G54, Ultima, Dimension Tide, Earth, Kamakuris, uh, Space Godzilla, Kiryu, Jet Jaguar, Singular Point, which he's seen a lot of play at the high level, Hedera, uh, Desgadora, and Gears and the Trains. So that is, this This is a culmination of all the whales and top players, what they think that the best level, the, I'm like stumbling over myself, man. This is a culmination of what the whales and the top players think are like the best characters in the game to use. Uh, I think it is a super informative list. Uh, I'll also have my tier list up at the end of the month. It's probably not gonna look like this because I use my tier list, or I make my tier list based off of the general play and you know the average player this is extremely end game meta play here this is extremely high ranked play high level play big brain strats right you you really need to be competing at their level to understand what their meta is like because it's very different than the average players but this is a glimpse i think for everyone else into what it's like to be a high level or end game whale or something like that right so very interesting list shout out to all those guys for compiling this and then telling me that i could totally make a video on it after i asked so Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye.